It's that vision of him sort of walking around, bopping, like ready to go, full of energy, really passionate. He walks with the same passion that he has for patient care. Every speech he gives is like, Unforgettable. A quintessential Dr. Smith moment would include a large crowd and somehow him making you feel like you're the only person in the room. He would open the door dramatically, walk in. He immediately captivated the room. The happiest moments I remember working with Larry was when he would open the door to my office, put his head in, have a huge grin and say, I have a great idea. I remember Larry saying to me, if we do this, we've got to ask ourselves, what kind of a physician do you need to be practicing medicine 15, 20 years from now? And Larry wanted to do something very different. He came up with this idea, along with other people, trained people as EMTs in the first nine weeks. Then he changed the whole curriculum. The most impressive thing about that medical school is the curriculum and the fact that they bring those students in there and they are immediately being trained to be EMTs. They are riding around in the Northwell ambulances. And from there on, it is all hands-on. It is not just book learning and lectures. They essentially become physicians the moment they walk in the door. We had all been thinking about how, you, how would you do this if you could start from scratch. People were so passionate about what they were doing and starting something totally new and excited to have students kind of involved in that process and, and that was really exciting to be part of. I was actually fairly certain that I was going to go to another medical school and was very much inspired by Dr. Smith. He put to rest all of the fears that I had about a new medical school and that this new curriculum wasn't just something that they came up with out of the blue. It was not necessarily a radical departure from what people believed they should be doing, but it was definitely a radical departure from what people were actually doing. So people talked about integrating the clinical work and the science, but nobody was doing that. But we're gonna make sure that people understand where patients come from and that you'll be doing clinical work. We fundamentally believe that this was the way to learn. I remember distinctly a day when I went to Pearls and we talked about congenital heart disease and uh, PFOs and I went to a clinic later that week um, in my general medicine clinic and we saw a patient who had a PFO and it was just like, oh, this is a real disease, this is a real person and it's not just something we're reading about in a book. The fact that we have patient interactions in our first year pretty much from day one with our EMT course. I think it allows us to, one, use our knowledge in context. So as we're learning the basic sciences of medicine, we're able to apply it right away. Medical schools took the view for the longest time, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. In the case of Hofstra and the Zucker School of Medicine here at Hofstra Northwell, Larry said, well, that may not be broke, but we're gonna make it better. He's definitely a person who has always looked holistically at people. He was a forerunner in all of this kind of stuff, patient-centered care, holistic care. His sincere concern for people as people who were part of families, part of communities, was really the defining feature of his extraordinary success as a doctor. I always make sure that I stop and think about who was in front of me. It's not just another patient, someone's daughter or someone's son. I think that's something that I learned very early in my medical school career. Uh, he changed the nature of medical education, Larry Smith. His DNA is medical education. I remember him telling us about several of the current faculty members that he had trained, which excited me for him to see me grow in the same way. One of the best things about being a resident at Sinai was because he would run these morning reports every morning where, you know, the residents would come in, we'd present three or four cases. And you're always thinking about, okay, what is he going to ask me? What is he going to ask me about? And he always asks you something you couldn't even think of. He would achieve that appropriate tension between what he would sometimes refer to as uh, incontinence and coma and we learned so much. If there's any learning experience I could ever sort of zoom back into and sit in on again, it would be that one. His phrase, strive for excellence, uh, is one that, I don't know, I will say with some frequency, just <laughs> randomly, how should we do this or what should we do? Oh, we've gotta strive for excellence. At, at yeah. any occasion, really. Yeah.
Larry does love to tell stories. Uh, when we would interview literally hundreds of medical students, and Larry would invariably choose one of his famous stories to humanize the process. I met him during orientation, and we were in a small group of students, and told us how excited he was that we were starting medical school, and told us stories about himself as a medical student and also as a trainee. My favorite uh, of his stories is the story where he started to smell something unusual while he was driving to uh, an interview for uh, his own residency. And Debbie kept saying, I smell something. And sure enough, the beetle had caught fire under his seat. Quintessential Dean Smith making jokes about well, sharing one of his stories that, uh, from his many years of experience. When he talks about the medical school, it's not just academics. It's about mentoring and diversity. Diversity is key to the medical school. It's key to Larry. The best care is provided by uh, a diverse workforce. We need to be able to figure out a way to both recruit a diverse student population and make sure that they excel. And that's what the pipeline program is. I have to say my pipeline program experience has been one of the proudest moments I've had. And the most important asset of that program is the mentorship. Brittany Elizabeth Nathan. And I'm proud to be uh, a mentor right now for a lot of the Pipeline students. It's a nice full circle moment. The scholarships uh, that we are raising at the gala are for medical students, um, and for the students at Hofstra who are doing the 4-4 program. Scholarships are absolutely critical to our ability uh, to support our students and see them through the medical school into their careers. He's trained so many people over the years, like thousands and thousands of people. If he were going to retire, how could he continue to have sort of his teachings carried on? And actually, the way he's done it is by starting a medical school. The medical school has really taken Hofstra to a whole new level, and I attribute its success to Larry. And I think, like many people, um, he's probably going to fail retirement, and uh, we'll all be the better for it. Congratulations on your retirement from your two favorite ophthalmologists, Christina and Mukesh. Wishing you all the best. I wanted to congratulate you on a marvelous career. Thank you from Boston. Thank you so much, Dr. Smith. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Dr. Smith. Thank you so much for everything that you've done for the school and all the students. Congratulations on your retirement. Thank, Thank you, Dr. 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 Smith. Congratulations, Dr. Smith. Thank you, Dr. Smith. Larry, you are the OG. Thank you for creating a school that I'm so proud to work at. I just want to thank you on behalf of the many, many, many people that you have touched. Thank you, Dr. Smith. We will miss you. Best of luck. Enjoy tonight. Take it in uh, and just know how much you mean to all of us. Thank you for everything. And most of all, thank you for this. Thank you, Jesus.